I want to thank everyone for allowing the benevolent and protective Order of Elks to participate in this ceremony. And to thank you all for attending this special ceremony to honor the family of a fallen American patriot. I am Robert Pegnani, the state veterans chairperson, and helping me today with the presentation is my wife Adele, the Utah Elk State Americanism chairperson. We are also friends with Roberta and feel especially privileged and honored to be here today. The Elks Medal of Valor can be presented to a deserving families of those who have made the supreme sacrifice in the conflicts in Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Afghanistan, Operation Enduring Freedom. Why are we gathered here today? To salute an American patriot, to honor the memory of Specialist Jordan M. Byrd, and to recognize Savannah Byrd, his wife, Aiden Byrd, his son, Roberta Pitt, his mother, Scott Pitt, his dad, and Savannah Bird, his sister, for the sacrifice that they have endured in losing someone dear to them. Why do Elks gather when an American soldier falls? We gather to mourn together such a tragic loss. The Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks is an intensely patriotic organization and we gather so that no loss of a fallen patriot will ever go unnoticed. Why do Elks recognize the family of a fallen soldier with the Medal of Valor? It is just to honor and recognize the family of a fallen soldier for they have suffered the greatest loss more than all of us, the personal loss of family. It is right to distinguish the people who loved him most, not only as an American citizen and as a soldier, but also as a husband, a son, and a brother. The Medal of Valor is given by the Grand Lodge of the Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks as a token of recognition of that great loss the recipients have endured, and a reminder that the memory of their loved one will be immortalized forever in this order of Elks and in the hearts of Elks all across America. Why do Elks call Specialist Bird an American patriot? We recognize Specialist Bird that gave freely of himself to the U.S. military. The sacrifice of service to your fellow citizens is the greatest a person can give. Specialist Bird gave his all, and it is fitting that we recognize his abundant, abundant charity in this way. On behalf of the Grand Exalted Ruler, the Great Order of Elks and the members, I present you with this, the Elks Medal of Valor, in memory of your husband and son for his sacrifice and recognition to you for your sacrifice as a grieving wife and mother. It may hope that this medal finds a place of honor in your home. Mr. Gavin Whiting will present the honor and remember flag. Okay, y'all are gonna have to bear with me. This is a first. Um, if I could have Tim and Faye Dolan please come up here and give me a hand with this. Tim and Faye Dolan are also Gold Star families. Um, I've asked them to help me with the presentation of this flag. 
kind of give you a breakdown, a little history on the flag. On December 29, 2005, George Anthony Lutz was killed by a sniper's bullet while on patrol in Fallujah, Iraq. In 2008, the Honor and Remember organization was founded in Chesapeake, Virginia by Mr. George Lutz. After going through the grieving process and meeting with other Gold Star families, George realized that there was something missing. There was no specific symbol to honor the sacrifice of those families. So he created the Honor and Remember flag. The Honor and Remember flag design is distinctive yet simple. Each, de each detail on the flag symbolizes an important part of the overall meaning of the flag. The red field represents the blood spilled by the brave men and women of America's military throughout our history who willingly gave their lives so that we all would remain free. The blue star represents active service military conflict. This symbol originated with World War I, but on this flag it signifies service through all generations from the American Revolution to present day. The white border surrounding the gold star recognizes the purity of sacrifice. There's no greater sacrifice or no greater price an American pay than to give his or her life to their country. The gold star signifies the ultimate sacrifice of a warrior in active service who will not return home. Gold reflects the value of life that was given. The folded flag signifies the final tribute to an individual life that a family sacrificed and gave to the nation. The flame is an eternal reminder of the spirit that has departed this life, yet burns on in the memory of all who knew and loved their fallen hero. We will always honor their selfless sacrifice and remember them individually by name. This flag here has been personalized for Jordan Bird. So on behalf of myself and the Dugway Fire Department, I'd like to present this flag to you. So you can get a close up of it. <laughs> Okay, now if you can bear with me again. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm, I'm, my name's Gavin Whitey, and I'm the planner and schedule for C. Martin out here at Dugway. Uh, those of you that live and work out here know me because I'm the one that's always sending out emails disrupting your lives in one way or another. Um, I never had the chance to know Jordan like a lot of people out here did. Um, after I was given this project uh, by my supervisors, I decided that I wanted to do, I wanted to find out everything I could about Jordan. Um, as I started talking to people, asking around, it seems like everybody out here has got something to say about Jordan. It's all good. I mean, even the police had something to say. <laughs> so every, everybody's had something, something to say about Jordan. Um, Now that this project's come to an end, and everything I've been through on it, I feel like I know Jordan as well as anybody. But what I wanted to do here is I just wanted to take a few minutes, or a couple minutes, and just thank everybody that was involved with helping me with this. So let me start off, I wanna thank Steve DeWitt and Dwayne Austin. They, uh, they had the faith and trust in me to put together this memorial and actually I don't know if they thought I could pull it off or not. 
I guess I showed you, didn't I, Dwayne? Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank Mr. Jim Barnes with the Elks. Um, he was the one who was instrumental in helping me obtain the uh, the funding through the Home, Home Depot Foundation uh, to be able to put this all together. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't for Jim and the Home Depot, I don't know where I'd be on this right now. But uh, just as important as Jim was, Derek Carver with the Home Depot. He also helped me get all of this through, get everything organized, and get everything in order. So I want to thank Jim. I want to thank all of the volunteers who came out here on their time off in this miserable heat and helped me lay all the bricks, the landscaping. You know, if it wasn't for them, I, I, none of this would be here. So I just want to say thank you to y'all. Then there's the group from Old Castle. They're the company that, when I contacted them and told them what I was working on, that this was going to be a project for a fallen hero, they stepped up and they said, whatever you need, you know, just let us know. They're the company that's responsible for all the papers. They gave me everything I needed to get this job done. So, you know, I'd like to thank Gerald, Travis, Mark Larson, Jana Miller, Ryan Bingham, and Tanya Cartwright uh, for helping me pull this off also. I'd also like to thank the guys from American Monument. Uh, when I first began this project, I started calling around. I called these people. They knew exactly who Jordan was. They already knew the story. That's why I was glad I was able to uh, work with them. The monument looks beautiful. Um, there's a few hiccups along the way, but in the end they pulled it out and this thing looks outstanding. A couple other people I just want to thank real quick is Mr. Steve Bott, who works for C. Martin, who took of his own time to come out here, help me with the excavation, getting the site preparation and everything done so that we could come in and begin our work. And then there's Aaron and Brett Baumgart, who took it upon themselves to provide lunch to our volunteers while they were out here working. I didn't ask them, they just offered. So thanks, you guys. And then lastly, I, I want to thank my grandson, Tyler, for all his help. And I especially want to thank my wife. I think she worked just as hard or harder than anybody else on this project. And she also had to put up with me for the last couple months with working the late nights, every day on the weekend, the endless shopping trips to Home Depot, all the nurseries, looking at plants, trees, flowers, everything to make this thing come to life. The other night when we were finishing up this project, we thought we would have the street lights to work by with enough light, but we didn't. We were out here working by flashlight so that I could have this thing done. When we wrapped everything up, we sat back on the bench just to kind of sit back and reflect on everything. And let me tell you, when you're sitting here at night and these lights are all lit up, there's a totally different feeling out here. We were sitting there relaxing on the bench, talking, and got talking about Jordan. We both agreed that it felt that as if Jordan was sitting right here with us. So, in closing, I just want to say what an honor and a privilege it's been to be able to work on this. When I first came to Dugway back in 2010, I never dreamed that I'd be working on something so monumental that would affect so many people's lives directly. So I just want to say thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Robin Nielsen, Dugway High School principal. Thank you everyone for coming today. We meet here today not to celebrate a death, but to celebrate a life well lived. Jordan Bird's life epitomized his love for his family, his service to his country, and a young person's spirit of adventure and fun. Jordan graduated from Dugway High in 2009. He was our senior class president and also the captain of our baseball team. Jordan's dream was to become a doctor and so he accelerated his life by graduating early and entering the University of Utah. Jordan continued to pursue his dream by joining the United States Army as a medic. Jordan's death came as a shock to Dugway High School and the entire community. But it is not his death, but his life that has made a difference for all of us. Jordan's life can be viewed as the embodiment of all that is good in young people. He is a man who loved life and embraced all of the opportunities that it had. His smile and his positive personality were infectious and he always had a good word for everyone. One of Jordan's famous quotes to all, especially the underclassmen, uh, the young girls, who were, by the way, all in love with Jordan, <laughs> he would say to them, love your parents, don't do drugs, and no boys. <laughs> and I can't think of any better words and advice than that. Jordan left the safety of a small town and a small high school to pursue his larger dreams. His service to his school, his family and community represent the energy and goodness of all of our students. This monument honors Jordan, his life and his sacrifice for his country. So when you walk on the path, please take time to reflect on the good that one short life can bring to many. Thank you. Mr. Audie Snodgrass, Dugway Proving Ground Garrison Manager. Colonel and Mrs. Estes, Sergeant Major Felt, Sergeant Major Morton, Mrs. Linares, Ms. Nielsen, Ms. Craig, Ms. Pitt, Ms. Bird, and other members of the Bird family. Distinguished guests, friends, and families of Dugway Proving Ground, good afternoon. You know, we've got to be very careful. Miss Robin was on it, absolutely to the point. It's very easy to get somber and sad about this, but this isn't about being sad and somber. It's about celebrating. It's about celebrating who Jordan Bird was. I mean, he was a young man who went to high school here, and more importantly, loved to play baseball. And I ask all of you, is there anything better than that? I mean, come on, unless you're in right field, maybe. <laughs> then he made the ultimate decision, join the Army to further his career. And then, of course, the unthinkable happened. But it's his life that we remember. It's not being sad. It's not being maudlin. It's about uh, uh, recognizing the oomph that was who Jordan Bird was. I'd very much like to thank our base ops contractor, C. Martin, for very much stepping up to the plate and building this wonderful memorial to commemorate Specialist Jordan in his life. Gavin, you and the members of your team have done an absolutely wonderful thing. As a relative newcomer to Dugway, I did not have the opportunity to meet or know Jordan. Looking at all of you here, families and friends, I'm certainly aware that's my loss. As an army and as a nation, we would really like to honor every one of our heroes who falls in battle. But for lots of reasons, that's just simply hard to do. C. Martin has stepped up and helped make that a reality for one of our own, Jordan Byrne. Every one of our heroes who gives selflessly by both enlisting and serving to make a difference for our nation, make our country great, and they make our community great. Every community is filled with heroes. This audience has heroes sitting and listening. Just like Jordan Bird and the entire Bird family, you make a difference and how Dugway lives and breathes. Every community lives and breathes because they are living and growing things. We're a better place, a stronger place.
because we had Jordan grow up here, play ball here, and truly live his life here. We owe a special thanks to the entire Bird family for sharing him with us. This memorial reminds us of something, of someone who stepped up to the plate and made a difference in our community and also in the lives of his teammates in a faraway land. His sacrifice remains a testimonial to selflessness and the desire to simply make things better. Jordan's last act was making a difference. It is here now for all of us to remember not only Jordan, but what he stood for and what his sacrifice does for us all. Again, a special thank you to Gavin Whiting and C. Martin for making this very special place for future generations, for future ball players and future heroes of our community, our reality. Thank you. And now Colonel Scott Estes, Dugway Proving Ground Commander. What a beautiful day to come out here and honor a great American hero. It truly is. Uh, the, the outpouring of support that you see here, it, it just uh, swells your heart, it has to. Uh, before I begin, Gavin, uh, I've driven by here in the last week or so, probably a half a dozen times, and every time you're out here and you're usually on your hands and knees working on this thing, it's just a great job, man. Just a super job. My hat's off to you and the whole crew. It's just another testament to the great partnership that we have, not only here on Dugway proper, but with the outlying community and everything else. So uh, again, my hat's just off to you. I'd like to take a moment to recognize some folks who are here first, of course, our good friend, Ms. Linares, who's always there for us uh, in many, many different ways. Toilet County School Commissioner, thank you very much. And Superintendent, thank you for very much for being with us. It's also great to have so many members from the Bird family with us today. Uh, so honored that you could join us today for this great event. And for everybody, thanks for coming out and uh, showing your support. Uh, I think when we pull this cover off, uh, you'll all agree it was worth the trip. As been mentioned a couple times, and I like some of you, I didn't know Jordan Bird. What I know about him now, I've picked up from what I've read about him and from talking to those folks who did know him. What I do know is that this is one of those truly bittersweet events, okay? On one hand, we're here to recognize a great American soldier and honor his sacrifices for our country. On the other hand, of course, we can't help but mourn the loss of a son, a husband, a father, a friend, and a brother. Last week, I was over at the gym working out as I want to do once in a while, and uh, watching ESPN on the treadmill, and in about an hour's time, the word hero came up four times. And every time that word came up, I thought forward to today and this ceremony. Later that day, I kept thinking about this. So I decided I'd look up what the word hero means. And of course, these days you don't use a book anymore, right? Those aren't real dictionaries, right? Everybody now uses the internet. But here's what, here's what Webster's on the internet had to say about a hero. A hero is an illustrious warrior. A hero is a man admired for his achievements and noble qualities. A hero is one who shows great courage. And as I read these words, I thought, yes, that is the true mark of a hero. And yes, that is the true mark of Jordan Bird. Jordan Bird who gave his life in the course of saving the life of another comrade under intense enemy fire. Jordan Bird, who was awarded the Silver Star for acts of gallantry in the face of the enemy. And Jordan Bird, who according to the members of his unit, 
1st Battalion, 506 Infantry, 101st Air, Air Assault Division. Every day downrange, he told them how much he missed and loved his wife and infant son. So, no offense to all those highly paid athletes on ESPN, but they've got absolutely nothing in common with Jordan Bird in the Department of Heroism. That said, it's fitting today that we unveil this memorial here behind home plate and dedicate this baseball field in Jordan's name and in his honor. As most of you know, and has been mentioned before, Jordan loved the game of baseball. And it's probably not too far of a stretch to say that this might very well have been his very favorite place on Dugway Proving Ground. So it's a great honor for me to be able to recognize the heroism of this great soldier in a way so appropriate and fitting to a life filled with joy and filled with happiness. Before I continue, I'd like to pass on a couple quotes from his buddies in his unit there at the 101st. The first is from Specialist David Gudmanson, who was Bird's bunkmate. He said, Doc was full of energy, bright, happy all the time, and always carried a huge smile with him. He was always there for you, no matter what. The second quote is from Specialist Michael Nicholas, who was another one of his buddies in his unit. He said, we're not surprised he did this. It's been said that when he ran up there, he had a smile on his face. That's just the way he was. He wanted to help somebody. That's the whole reason he became a medic, was to help others. So, as has been mentioned a couple times before, as we continue this ceremony, what I'd ask you to do is take this as a celebration of a life well lived and a life that had a love for baseball. Again, I didn't know Jordan, but from what I have learned, I think that's the way he really would have wanted it. And so, Mrs. Bird, Ms. Pitt, if y'all could join me up here. Will officially unveil this great testament to this great American. At this time, Colonel Estes and Specialist Bird's family unveil the monument. of the Dugway High School baseball team will now escort Savannah and Aiden Bird to the pitching mound to throw the first pitches of the 2012 Dugway High School baseball season. Please join us at the baseball field. Tell it's gonna be 